Welcome to the making of a DM. Are you frustrated that you're not accomplishing big things in your business and life? More importantly, random thoughts from the private jet event at my boy Sean Whalen's event where I spoke to over 500 amazing people. So with that said, let's get started. I'm more Kevin Hey there, it's your boy Mark Evans, DM, coming to you from Parkland, Florida. Man, it's been a lot crazy last seven days. Hope you're doing absolutely amazing. I'm excited to be here with you today to share some insights of hanging out on a massive jet yacht and speaking to almost 600 people in Utah with a lot of amazing people I got to meet um, recently. So as I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm getting ready to prepare to roll out of Florida Head back to our Ohio home for the summer. Uh, we'll leave here in a couple of weeks. But over the last two weeks, you know, you start getting a lot of stuff done, you know, from everything we've procrastinated on and all that crazy stuff. And while we're in Ohio, where we'd be doing a house in here in Florida. And while we've been in Florida, we've been redoing our entire basement, which I'm super excited to get there. We got a, a cigar lounge, a theater room, a sauna room, kids uh, classroom and, you know, hangout area and all that cool stuff. Pretty cool uh, basement. I'm excited for that. Uh you know, it always starts off as a $100,000 project, ends up at $300,000, but it is what it is, man. The cool thing about spending money is, you know, what's the saying? If you have a problem and you and money's the problem and you have money, you don't have a problem. And I remember not too long ago where everything was about money. I always try to go cheap, try to pay less and do all that fun stuff. And just, it's not a good way to, to grow. Um, really held me back, actually, to be honest. But that's how I was raised talked about my thought auditing and, you know, and all that stuff, but hire great people and great things happen, um, buy the best products and you don't have problems all the time. (laughs) It's kind of weird how that works, huh? So, and again, this isn't to brag or impress, but to impress upon, uh, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff going on and, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of random things here today, but not so random. They'll all link together and I'll share that here with you today. But I've been on cloud nine, to be honest with you. I got to go out and speak to Utah with my uh, boy, Sean Whalen, invited me to Lions Not Sheep. A lot of people there, five to 600 people, somewhere around there. Gave them all my book, Me Economy, which will be coming out June 19th this year. So please be ready for that. Uh, you know, DM me and I'll get you on the VIP list. Uh, we got some cool things we're going to be doing. As you may or may not know, 100% of those proceeds go to charity. So very excited to give to the charity and all that stuff and uh, help impact a lot of kids' lives. This is actually going to the Underground Project uh, with Tim Ballard. Um, so really neat and exciting for this. But uh, as I'm sitting there speaking, um, and I'm just going behind the scenes and sharing like very vulnerable, real stuff with you. So as I always do, I'm sharing real shit with you 24-7. Um, if you follow me on social media, at Mark Evans DM on Instagram or Facebook, I'm sharing some stuff like this behind the scenes. But I was scared to death to go speak on stage. I don't know why. Actually, I do know why. That's why I'm talking to you about it. Um, After I thought audited on it, I I started going in deeper, trying to ask myself, like, why am I so nervous? Like, literally, I couldn't eat lunch, couldn't eat breakfast. I was like, I'm speaking at one the first day. Sean came out, just crushed it. And uh, what I was going to say, I said none of it. (laughs) Um, I just, you know, but here's, here's the rub. Here's what happened. So one, I psyched myself out. Um, because there's some pretty big names there. Ed Milet was speaking right after me. You know, Dan Fleischman, a lot of great people, a lot of great speakers. That's what they do for a living. Um, I'm not a speaker. I'm just a just a guy, just a dad, husband, just trying to you know build businesses and you know get stupid, filthy rich, and help a lot of people. But I went on stage and and just shared me. I was shaking. My hand was going 100 miles per hour. Um, I was backstage. I you know I couldn't swallow. <laughs> it was getting my throat was tightening up. I was thinking for reasons to leave, but I knew that's never going to happen. And it reminds me of a lot of people that are so close to a whole nother world, but yet when they get scared, they quit. When they get scared, they bail. When they get scared, they just tap out. And it's really a separator. It really is because I got up on stage and I met a lot of amazing people because of it. Actually, people's lives that will change because I showed up and stepped up. 
And 99% of this battle, we've heard this a million times over, but it's really showing up. If you want to lose weight, show up to the gym. You don't have to have the best workout. You don't have to have the perfect workout. Just get your ass to the gym and show up. Me speaking on stage, you know, I, it wasn't the best speech, but it could be better. It could have been worse as well. But just show up. I promise you one thing interesting. Every single person that got off that stage said I could have done better. I could have hit these points harder. Because that's what success is about is constantly improving. I learned a lot. I got up there. I did it. I, I said some funny things. I said some serious things. And some stuff I don't even know what the hell I said. But I said it. And it is what it is. And I want to improve upon it. But we just got to show up, don't we? You know, like when you're doing that marketing thing and you're scared, just show up and pay the bill and market and see what happens. Get results. You know, show up. Get serious about yourself and understand, you know, when I'm backstage and they're like ready to introduce the DM or whatever, I'm thinking like, dude, this is a legacy piece. This is I'm doing this to to lead by example to my family, to my friends, to my colleagues, to people that like watch me. By the way, lots of people are watching you and not what you say, but what you do. <laughs> FYI. So if you talk big game, but don't do a big game, you will be fucking found out sooner than later. I promise you that. And, you know, it, it's just, it was really cool to step on stage and, and uh, see 500 plus amazing people's faces and, and the cool effect that happens after that. So you get off stage. I actually don't go to the green room. I go straight to the back of the room and hang out with people. I want to connect with people. I, I, I really do like it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a good thing and bad thing for me to be honest with you. Cause I'm the type of guy that's hanging around until the end. And uh, sometimes that's not so good because it's like people don't understand the value or it meaning that they just want to talk about nothing. Like I'm there to help. Now they're just to talk. You know what I mean? So some really neat things happen, though, when, you know, shaking people's hands, taking pictures, signing books, all that fun stuff, which is cool. But I'm really there to like, you know, how do we help change the world? How we, one person at a time and uh, change their world first and foremost, their me economy. And uh, what's neat, that book, it wrote it for me. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I write books for my kids, uh, first and foremost for me. And then secondly, for my kids. And then third, it's for you guys. It's the evolution process of their dad is what you guys are reading, who I am, really am deep down inside my, my collective thoughts and a format, i.e. book or audio book to share the, the stuff I share with my kids. I'm not saying you're children, but we're all children, right? At the end of the day, just some of us act like we're growing up and others aren't. Um, I definitely don't want to ever grow up. But, you know, I'm just sharing the stories, sharing the messages of, you know, where I'm at, where I'm going through and, you know, things I'm discovering. I, you know, I'm very fortunate to be, you know, I stood up and one day I said, I want to help other entrepreneurs. And I've, I've, we've, I've worked with a lot, a lot of amazing people at many different levels. And it's one of my favorite things I get to do. It pays the least, but it makes, it makes the most impact in my life. Um, it makes me want to deal with stuff I don't want to deal with so I can report back to them. And then what I'm talking about is leading by example, leading by leading, <laughs> like doing the fucking work that matters, getting punched in the face and reporting back, failing miserably and reporting back, succeeding at a high level and reporting back and everything in between. That's what leaders do. For some reason, you know, all of you guys think you can, you know, win everything and not risk anything. And it's just not how real life works. And that's why people are frustrated and overwhelmed. And some cool takeaways from the event. Number one, you know, uh, this is something I think about often is about giving. Big giver. I love giving. Um, I grew up as a small town hillbilly in Ohio. So giving was just a dream. I used to go to church and put a dollar in it thinking that was a big deal. Then I elevated to five to 10 to $20, you know, like the $20 where you grab it and shake it. So people see you actually put it in because you're the big dog. And I thought I was, I thought I was doing big stuff. And uh, what I didn't realize is I was, it's a muscle in my brain. I was working it. And I was pushing it up little by little. And, uh, you know, at the event, I was fortunate enough to be able to donate um, a decent amount of money, high five figures off of a whim um, of something that hit me in the heart, tapped me on the shoulder and said, you got to do it. And, uh, you know, my buddy was, it was, it was interesting. It was a crowd of, and I'm not doing this to showboat or anything, just so you know, it, this is more something. And by the way, this is why some people don't give is because they're afraid they're showboating or showing people up. Listen, if you can show people up and out give them, do it because that means everyone's winning. You're going to push them up. You're going to push you up. And more importantly, you're going to help the cause. So don't get it twisted. I don't share all the giving I do, but I, you know, this year I've given, you know, over $150,000 unexpectedly just off the whim, not counting everything else I've given. And again, this isn't to brag or impress, but to impress upon like what you think you can do, you can do so much more. 
And um, when you're tapped on the shoulder, which we all are daily, probably all the time, and you either hear it, acknowledge it, or you hear it and don't acknowledge it. Um, and in that moment during the bidding, um, I kept it kept going up. And I was like, you know, it was like, you know, going once, going twice. And then I just threw out the big number and uh, people were like, what? Like it was a big deal. So for me, giving is a muscle. And when I got to give, I, I felt the tap and I said, I got to give, I got to give big. And I want to make an impact on homeless families. I want to make an impact on children. And I want to make an impact on, you know, you know, people that are being abused and, you know, many situations. So I was able to give. And what's cool about giving that way is one, it's anonymous um, other than the people in that room, but the people's lives will touch us through someone else's efforts. Um, a buddy of mine, Dan Fleischman, runs that charity, uh, multiple charities actually, but he's able to parse it out and, you know, do as he wishes to the the charities he's a part of and, and, and impact hundred percent of it goes to the charity. Not, there's no like crazy fees or anything like that. This is, you know, out of pure heart. So it's pretty cool. But when you're doing that, you know, this is a muscle and what I think, well, I know for a fact, a lot of people talk about abundance. I'm an abundance person. I'm all about abundance, but their actions are very, you know, the opposite. So even if you think you're a big dog, by the way, there's a, there's a, somebody I recently was talking to and he's like, dude, I'm big time. You know, I'm heavy in crypto. I'm like heavy in crypto. What does that mean? First of all, like people throw words around like it's fucking water, by the way. But like, he's like, dude, I'm heavy in crypto. And I'm like, heavy meaning what? And he said, $20,000. Now keep in mind, heavy in crypto to me is mean millions, not $20,000. $20,000, truth is I wouldn't even do it, right? But maybe you would, maybe it's big for you, but it's not big for him because he has more money than that. And he's acting like he's heavy because he's lied to himself thinking he's a big dog in a small tank. And, um, you know, his bark is definitely bigger, <laughs> bigger than his bite. So I'm like, dude, like, how is this big time? That's what I think about. Like, who in your who who told you that's big time? Who told you that's that's big in any way, shape, or form? And it's weird to me that people would like encourage, like, dude, that's big time, man. You're really you're you're going heavy. Like, where is that heavy? Heavy lying is what I would say. But again, listen, if you have 20 grand and it's all, you have 20 grand and that is heavy, but this guy's this is not his situation. And this is his biggest problem. This is what's holding him back from a whole nother level. And where I'm going with this story is about giving. Because giving is one of the most amazing gifts in the world. I've given millions of dollars away to charities over the years, uh, many years. I've been doing it, giving for 25 years uh, on purpose, very consciously. And I want to give a lot more. I want to give nine figures away, over 100 million in my lifetime, if not more. But, you know, probably 10 years from now, I'll be looking back saying, why was I thinking so small? I hope I do say that. But that's a big number to me right now to give away. It's very interesting, this game we play with ourselves. But giving truthfully, if you're a real giver, what it really does, if you know it or not, it unlocks a secret door to another world. Many people will never experience it because they're too afraid to give. They're too afraid to give to the next level. I'm not talking giving twenty dollars and it's not a big deal. I'm talking like when like if if you have ten grand in the bank and you give, you know, three thousand dollars. That's a big deal. That's a big move. That's a big play. So what I'm thinking is as we're growing and evolving is it the doors it unlocks, by the way, I don't want to leave you hanging. The door that it unlocks is the, the truth of abundance. See, me and my buddies, we give all the time. We give our time, we give our money, we give both. And we're constantly asking ourselves how to give more. And it's totally opposite of how I was raised. Like people thought if you gave, you're, you're like, oh my God, you're taking away from your family. Oh man, you could have bought a new house for that. Oh my gosh, I could have bought new cars. I could have paid off this. I could have done this. I could have sent my kids to college or whatever. And the, the answer is yes, you could have done all of that. So why haven't you? See, giving is a muscle. It's a, it's a, it's a secret power that the ultra wealthy realized. And by the way, it's not just wealthy. It's just people in general that are great givers. And when you give you do get. If you truly believe in tithing and you get 10x and all this stuff back, why aren't you giving more? Let me ask you another question. Who's taught you about giving? Who's taught you that giving is good? Who's taught you that giving can be bigger, can get you more and mean it? Who's taught you the most amazing gift of giving is the give? It feels amazing. 
It's very, in a, in a selfless way, like it makes you feel amazing. Like you can change an individual's life by giving. Frank McKinney recently posted on social media, on Facebook and stuff, talking about, you know, us donating almost $300,000 to the DM family village. We're actually getting, a, we built an entire village for 50 houses to house, I think, 400 people for the rest of their lives, self-sustained community. Like that makes me feel fucking amazing, by the way. It's cool to tell my kids, more importantly, lead, not just tell them, show them, tell them who dad had to become to do that. What we had, what, what sacrifices, what situations, the moments to get to that moment. That's the shit that excites me. And again, I know like it's the, the give, once you make that decision, it's so mentally tacking, but when you do it and release and commit, it opens up abundance to a whole nother level. You can never outgive the world, FYI, ever. It's impossible. You got to step the game up of giving. And uh, I was, like I said, I was honored to be able to give. I sent the money immediately, and it will impact a lot of people's lives because I've been working on myself, and I'm proud of that. And the guys in the DM family, the small private mastermind group I run, we're talking about giving all the time. I've actually had people tell me giving is the biggest thing they've got out of the thing of learning how to make more money. They're like, it's wild. The more I give, the more I make. It's wild. The more I give, the more time I get with my family. And again, like I said, what it re what we're really saying, it, unlo it unlocks, it opens up the door of abundance to a whole new level. And I'm not talking giving comfortably. I'm talking giving uncomfortably, being conscious of it and giving. If you think you can only give 1,000, give 1,500. If you think you can only give 5,000, give 7,000. Get uncomfortable. Whatever number pops in your brain, give that plus. Start practicing this. This is a muscle. Every time you have an opportunity, it's everywhere, by the way, an opportunity to give, an opportunity to plant a seed, person behind you at the grocery store, the person behind you at the uh, checkout in the drive through pay for them. Start building up this muscle. I don't care if it's $3 or $300, do it. Don't make it, well, maybe if it's only this or that. No, that's not the game you're playing. The game you're playing is leveling up. Play the game. It works. Game of life, by the way, I'm talking about. Giving. <coughs> Second thing here, gratitude. I've had show entire show about gratitude, but this is not to go lightly, is be grateful. What's the worst that happens if you give? If you give it all, the worst case scenario, you, you have zero money in the bank, you can go make more money, but more importantly, you've helped change people's lives. It feels pretty good. I don't know anybody that's given it all that doesn't have more. I really don't. Uh, maybe there are people out there that exist. I don't know them. But being grateful, and I, I like I've never came, like I've never had someone come, Mark, I'm so grateful I can't stand it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just doesn't exist. So get fucking grateful. You can see, you can hear, you can type, you can talk. You have the internet. You have opportunities galore. It's 2021. You can make as much money as you want possible. Absolutely can do that. You can connect with people that you could have never connected with 10 years ago because of the interweb, the social media, and all that. So I want you to get grateful. Get more grateful. Get stupid grateful. Like meaning so grateful that you can't stand it anymore. You're like, I can't. You're like, your, your body's just like, I'm so grateful. Dude, when I'm walking down the road, the breezes, I can feel the breeze. I can taste. I can touch. I can smell. You know what? Biggest thing on the stage, what I realized a couple of days ago here in Utah is people come to me, Mark, I don't have enough time to get wealthy. Mark, I don't have enough time to get rich, whatever that means to you. And it, it used to get me thinking like, man, these people are busy. They got a lot going on. But now I'm buying into their bullshit, to be honest with you. And I'm trying to figure out how to help them. We know what the thing is. I realized this when I was talking to 500 plus people is I'm watching their heads and they're bobbing around and they're talking. And it just hit me. You know what the real problem is? You have too much time. I know it sounds crazy, right? You have too much time. Yep. I don't care if you have kids, work, school, whatever. You have too much time. Because if you have time to talk about you not having time, that time and energy could have been put into your business and your life and your financial future. See, successful people are always pushing the needle. I talk about this in the economy. You want to get an extra 30 days a year? Go to bed an hour late earlier and wake up an hour, two hours earlier. Start hacking time. Squeeze the time. I needed 10 hours of sleep a day. Bullshit, eight hours. 
I need eight hours a day. Bullshit. Go to six, seven, ten. Like, change the hours. Go down. I'm not saying you're going to sustain this forever, but what happens? You're, you're working in the gym. You're working the muscle. You have too much time. If you're talking about you don't have time, you have too much fucking time. You know it, and I know it. I see this all the time. I just couldn't put my finger on it. And I don't buy your bullshit anymore. Well, Mark, I don't have enough time. Bullshit. See, when you have a goal and you go out and do the work, you're not talking about fucking time. You're talking about how do I get more money to get more time? If I didn't have money or time, I'd fucking quit my job and I'd have all the time in the world to go make real money. I did a poll recently because this has been think I've been thinking about this time thing. And it's like, you know, I just don't have time or money. 72% of the people said they don't have time or money. That's pretty fucked up if you want my opinion. How don't you have either or? I'm not saying be reckless here, but my, my brain goes to this. By the way, I've been poor. If I had no time to pursue my dreams and goals, and plus had no money to pursue my dreams and goals, I would fucking eliminate the money piece to give me time to go get more money. See, what we're really all chasing is more time to do what we want to do. Lots of people here say, Mark, I just want to make a couple extra bucks. No, you fucking don't. You want to get more money. You want to get stupid, filthy rich to spend time doing what you love to do. I don't care if it's work. I don't care if it's hanging out with the family. I don't care if it's pursue your goals, dreams, passion, whatever. You want to take that money and do bigger things. But you can't go do these bigger things until you want to, until you get time. But how, do you, how don't you have time or money? What that really says is you're fucked up in the head and you need mindset reset. That's what you're saying. You need to reset your mindset. You need to realize that's stinking thinking. Think about it. I have no time or money. So why not eliminate the thing that you don't have, i.e. money, to get the thing you want, time. Take that time and go earn real money. Listen, I barely graduated high school. I never went to college. But I'm fucking pretty sure I'm right on this. It's strange to me that you don't have either or. Over 70%, and I'm talking hundreds of people took it, said that. So it's wild to me. That's why I fly private. That's why I spend a lot of money a year flying private. Because I want more time. I can jump, I can literally drive the rolls or car, whatever car we got, limo, whatever we got, truck, escalate, anything, pull up to the front of the jet, hop on and take off. No one's telling me what to do. I'm tell, I am I get there when I want. Obviously, I'm respectful. I say I'm leaving at 10. I get there at 9.50. I take off with the fam. But what was cool to Utah, we invited 10 people that each paid money to be on the jet for the three-day experience, four-day experience, actually. And every, I guarantee you, every single person that joined us on the jet changed their life. I'd put a million dollars on it. One guy, this was not expected, was not even thought about. One guy's actually going to come to work for one of our companies and generate massive six figures, hopefully seven figures a year for himself and his family. He's a hustler. He's hungry. He's got the mindset. He's got, he's, he's got the muscle. He's just in the wrong vehicle. The most excited thing I'm excited about, to be honest with you, not only does he have all that stuff, which is really cool, but he's going to be able to spend time with his daughter. He doesn't really get to spend a lot of time with his daughter because he's always on the road traveling for his job or his, what he does today. And what we offer at one of our companies is he could literally sit at home and do everything he needs to do. Go to his daughter's baseball games, softball games, gymnastics, hang out and do math homework in the daytime, whatever he wants. I'm more excited about that than anything else. Yes, he'll make our company a lot of money. Yes, he'll make a lot of money. Yes, he'll change a lot of people's lives. But that, to me, is what this is about. And he was on the jet. I could go down the line of all these guys. What's cool about it, too, it forges relationships at another level. See, when you invest in yourself with the right people, people take notice of that. My job, when people invest, let's say it was $10,000 round trip, my job 
is to make sure, one, that you have an amazing time, and two, that you get massive value and a return on that $10,000. There will be people that, that came on that jet that will generate millions of dollars through connections, through relationships, through just by showing up and making the commitment. Lots of people, first time they ever flew private, expanded their horizons. I know it did me. When I did it, I, that changed my life. When I ponied up money, jumped on a jet, I'm like, oh my God, this is real. People live like this. Why can't I? I started asking different questions. And now I get to fly private. I'm not saying I'm better than you and all that bullshit. I'm just saying, I remember when I had to do this when I was sitting in coach to go to first class. First class to private. It's a journey. Some of you are on the never journey. Some of you are on the 10-year journey. Some of you are on the tomorrow journey. But it is a journey. If it exists, why can't we do it? They didn't build these jets for nobody. They built them for somebody. And why can't that somebody be you and I? This is the shit I think about. One guy on there, he's already doing it. He's already, he, like, he's crushing it. He's, this guy comes from Canada. Two stories, actually. Two guys from Canada. One guy came from Canada, out, straight out of quarantine, came straight here, boom. He said, dude, I wouldn't miss this for the world. It changed his life. Met so many great people. Already has deals in the making. He'll, he'll generate literally six, seven figures from that one trip. See, when you guys think about trips, you're thinking about fucking, you know, bonbons and hanging out on the beach, you know, sipping cocktails. on. That's cool once in a while. But listen, guys and gals like hang out with us. We're, we're on a mission to grow. We know we haven't even barely tapped the scratched the surface of life. We're very resourceful. We want to connect. We want to grow. We want to expand. Another cool thing. You guys will see this on social soon. This artist made some really cool pieces for me, Anthony. And I'll be sharing with this because you guys all should follow him. More importantly, support him and buy his stuff because he's got some really badass artwork. But he came on the jet. I actually just had lunch with him today here in Florida um, as well. But he's a good dude doing some really neat things. You know, generate like an artist making real money, changing people's lives through his art. And uh, more importantly, changing his life. Gets spent every day with his son and his wife. Again, if, if my common theme, if you don't understand, family for me is fucking big, huge, ginormous. Most of the people out here running around chasing the money. I'm not chasing the money. One, I realized a long time ago, money runs way faster than me. Actually, as we're talking, as you're listening to me, there's money going through your ears right now. Literally. How? Through the, through the interweb. The airwaves. Right? People are transactioning right now. There's transactions. It's floating around on the interweb. In the cloud, they say, right? The problem is most people's clouds in their head, they're cloudy. That's why they don't have direct results because they're too unfocused. I don't know what to do, man. Wrong question, right? So on the jet, some really neat things happen and uh, pop. I want to give you a couple of things, uh, takeaways as well. If you're not happy with your results, not big enough results, I want, I'm going to tell you the answer why. Giving's one of them, <laughs> but there's a lot of answers. But the real thing is this. You're too focused on granular, not grand results. Actions. See, you're, you're, you're so busy, caught up in the day-to-day -day mundane task. You can't literally think about big shit. The guys I'm rolling with, me included, people have told me I'm nuts my whole life. People are like, dude, you think way big, man. Man, get your head out of the cloud, Evans. That shit's never going to happen to people like you. Like, my shit's so big that I have to recruit people to help me get there. Not just people, but people are way smarter than me which is not hard to do, but just, I'm not that smart. That's my secret power. I know I'm not smart. I know it. It's one of my secret powers. I don't try to act like it. I don't go around fronting. Dude, I'm the smartest, man. You guys, these podcast shows could be a thousand percent better, but it's just who I am. This is me. I'm talking to you as if you were sitting in my office directly across from me. I'm not trying to do any kind of trickery, NLP bullshit and all this stuff. I'm just talking to you as a fucking man. Man to man, man to woman, whatever. I want to help people. This is my this is my style. Like it or not, it doesn't matter to me because this is me, right? My whole life, people has been trying to change my life. You know what I mean? Lots of people. And still, today, 
right? They still think I'm crazy. They still think I'm dreaming too big. They still think, dude, why do you need a jet? Why do you need a yacht? Why do you need all these mansions? Why do you need all these crazy cars? You don't even drive that much. It's true. But I want them. That's why. The fuck? That's all I need to tell you. First, I don't have to tell you anything. But that's why. I like it. You know what I mean? So you have to understand if you want to get grand results, you have to stop doing granular actions. Now, listen, before you shut everything down and, you know, take this out of proportion, I'm not saying that shit doesn't need to get done. Truth is, small things create big things, a lot of small things. But you as a leader, you have to be constantly reinforced grand, huge, ginormous, painting the picture to your followers and your teams how big this shit really could get. Take them to another level. Take them to another stratosphere through your vision. That's why you're called a visionary, not a fucking talkinary. You're visionary, not a granulinary. Dude, we're going to. We got to like work really hard on sending an email. What should the subject line be? Dude, I got the best idea for the company. It's going to be worth about 100000 a year, but I got to figure out what the name of the company is going to be. That's granular bullshit that will never matter. It will never change your life. If you start a business today and call it Business A, and in three years, it's crushing it, you could always fucking change the name because now you have millions of dollars raking in. Call it whatever the fuck you want. But the problem is, and I saw this live in person, and I see it every day, by the way, but this guy, amazing dude, amazing guy, by the way, I actually, me and my boy, Sean, we were his first customers ever right there on the spot. By the way, I don't just talk shit. I fucking do it. I want to be clear with this. Most of the fucking people you guys probably listen to, probably 99% are bullshit talkers. I'm talking, I'm leading by example. He holds up these amazing flags. And these are flags that are created through, through uh, servicemen's uniforms and women's uniforms. And he takes them and creates these really cool flags. And I'll get it on social media. I'll try. It. And again, you, you can see it. It's, it's at Mark Evans DM if you go to my Instagram. But these flags, and, you know, I paid $500 for them. Me and Sean both bought one for 500 bucks. He wanted to give them to us for free. But that's bullshit. Because this guy's busting his ass for free all the time. And people are taking advantage of him because he's allowing it. By the way, it's his fault, not their fault. It's his fault, right? Because when you accept full responsibilities, you get fucking results. You create accountability to yourself. And me and Sean, we said, yo, here's the deal. Here's what we think they're worth. Here's what they're worth. Here's what we're willing to pay. And I'll pay you right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next hour. Right now. And we literally, within four to seven minutes, I'm not exaggerating created a business where he generated $15,000 in front of a room of 40 people. 15,000. And what's interesting, he's been thinking and talking about this idea for the last four fucking years. How he wants to change these people's lives. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. But yet, he's caught up in the granular details. It's stealing from his dreams and all these fucking people he could help. Because he's caught in his head. He's afraid to go to market with it because it could get shot down. He's afraid to go to the market with it because it could be bigger than he thought. By the way, he about shit his pants there on stage when we, we sold $15,000 of these flags. And he's like, oh my God. He went from, how do I start my business to holy shit, how do I service my 30 customers that just came out of the woodwork? Think about the difference of the mindset. He was focused on granular problems. When you have 15 grand coming in the door brand new, these are called grand problems. The bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. No one gives two fucks what his company, I didn't. I don't even know what his company name is still, and I paid him 500 because it doesn't matter. I wanted the product. I wanted to support him. I love what he stands for. I love what he's doing. I love what that means. He's so worried about wanting to help all these people. He's not sharing his story. He's caught up in his own head. And this, my friend, is why it's so important to be around people that have been there, done that, and more importantly, will tell you directly how to get there to the next level, how to step your game up. That's the shit I love. I've done this, I've seen this, and I've been a part of this on the front side and back side of creating new companies out of thin fucking air. If you have a grand vision, 
the granular shit will take care of itself. If you have 15 grand in the bank, you can pay someone to do granular shit. But the problem is so many people are so focused on such granular bullshit not nonsense. Do I, I need to check out my business card. No one has a fucking business card this day and age. And if they do, it doesn't mean anything. A business card does not sell business. It's old school. Old school. I'm telling you. If you're not where you want to be, it's not because it doesn't exist. It's because you're focused on granular, not grand. Oh, let me say this again. If you're not where you want to be, it's not because it doesn't exist. It's because you're focused on granular, not grand. You have to lead the pact. You have to push the made up boundaries in your head. You have to drive and go, go for the gold. More importantly, you got to share the grand vision constantly. So much so you actually start fucking believing it. Because at first, when you tell someone you're going to build a million dollar company or 10 million or 100 million or multi billion dollar company, you might not see exactly how it's going to happen, but you know there's a possibility. And if there's a possibility for someone to do it, why the fuck can that person be you? Why can it be you? Yes, you may have to change vehicles halfway through. That's okay. NASCAR guys and race car drivers do it all the time. They change cars out all the time. 300 laps, lap 200, something happens, change cars or whatever. I think they do that. Pretty sure they do. Change tires. Grip's different. Athletes do it all the time. They change their cleats because things are slipping because they, they, the, the weather changed. Times have changed. We got to fucking change. Are you sharing your grand visions? Or are you fucking talking about granular bullshit to your buddies? If you're not hanging out with people that are talking about big shit, getting you a boner harder than fucking Mount Rushmore or whatever, whatever that is. Not, not whatever that is. Mount Rushmore is awesome, but like hard on to get you excited. Females, whatever, gets you excited. Then you ain't hanging out with the right people. And I'm telling you right now, if you can't fucking make money now, you never can. There's more money floating around in this fucking world right now than I've ever, ever, ever seen. Me and my buddy sit around talking about how much money's out there. We've all been in business for many, 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 many years. And we're asking ourselves, where is all this fucking money coming from? The goal is, how does that money get into our pocket? How does that get in our, to our ecosystem? By providing services and values and opportunities and, and great things. I was just last, yesterday hanging out with a guy, his name's Peter. He actually runs a, a pretty big Rolls Royce dealership here in Florida. And we're talking, he's like, dude, I sold 86 Bentleys and Rolls Royces. I don't have inventory. My problem is I don't have inventory. We're talking cars that go from 100,000 to five, eight, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000. And he has zero inventory. He's like, we've never, ever, ever, ever seen this. Now, guys, listen, I got to be straight up with you. I'm fucking very curious. The biggest lie, talking about Magician versus Mule, is curiosity killed the cat. Bullshit. It's curiosity has made me a lot of money. Maybe my buddies a lot of money. People I know in business a lot of money. I'm very curious as to why or what this looks like. And, you know, hey, Peter, I hear what you're saying. Why do you think that is? Folks, listen. Listen. Here's what he said. Mark, it's real simple. The rich get richer, and they're spending money like crazy on all kinds of stuff. Folks, I have a watch that's went up six figures. Yes, yeah, six figures. I'm not shitting you. It's crazy right now. What's going on is there's so much opportunity and money. And if you're not making more right now, it's not because it doesn't exist. It's because you're not asking the right questions. You're not getting in front of grand opportunities. You're fucking Mickey Mouse in it over there and you know it. You're, more importantly, you could say whatever the hell you want. Your bank account knows it. Until you step it up, nothing changes. Until you evolve. By the way, who taught you to think about being grand? Mommy and daddy did this when you're young. Johnny, you can be whatever you want, buddy. Okay, cool. When you get 18, 22, 24, quit fucking dreaming and get a job. Quit fucking dreaming and go to work. Let's go. 30, 32, get a diploma. Go to college and get a better job. What they're really telling you is quit fucking dreaming. It's Mickey Mouse. 
It's micro. It's granular stuff. I challenge you to start focusing on something so big. By the way, me and my wife, I got to be honest with you. This is a true story. Me and my wife's biggest fights we get into are my wife's very granular with stuff. By the way, I don't, I don't want to marry someone just like me. That would not be good for any way, shape, or form for anybody. But my wife thinks about granular shit. I don't, genuinely, I swear on my life, I don't think about granular stuff. I've actually oftentimes been told I oversimplify stuff. I'm not mad at that, by the way, because it doesn't get me in the weeds. See, when you get caught up in the weeds, you see too many problems, too many problems. You just tap out and move on. Nope, don't want to deal with that bullshit. See, I go from A to Z, start to the grand. Everything else, in the, if, if the grand's big enough, and meaning opportunity and time investment for what I could reap the rewards of, are big enough that I could produce revenue, I could make enough money to hire people to deal with all the fucking stuff from, you know, between A to Z for me. I just got to hire, have the balls to hire people, and I got to have the grand vision to give me the balls to hire people. <laughs> I got to see it. I got to see the path. Everything else is just details. And I'm not saying they're not important. I'm just saying, is it, should, is it stuff you should be doing? Are these the things you should be focused on? Are these the things that are hindering your growth, success? See, what's interesting is I've, owned, I've, I've worn every hat in my companies, every single fucking hat, multiple times. I had to beat it into my skull. That when I got granular, I never could get out of my own way asking myself, why am I constantly having the same problem? I'm not making enough money and I have the same problems. I had to get grand problems. I had to get new problems. I had to get a whole nother level of problems to get out of my own way. And the way to do that is start taking different actions, start asking self different questions, start making bigger front end investments, hiring better people. By the way, you're going to have shit storms in all, inside of all this. I don't care if it's granular or grand, there's still going to be problems. Are you granular or grand with your actions and thoughts and talks and goals and drives? Are you granular in your efforts or grand in your efforts? These are things you need to thought audit on. Pay attention to. How are you investing your time in your business? Where are you investing your time? Well, man, I'm doing accounting work and bookkeeping. Why the? F Unless that's your company that you're trying to grow to $100 million a year. What the fuck are you thinking? Hire this shit out. I'll hook you up with someone that's amazing. Hire this stuff out. Pays 500 to 700 bucks a month. And go make money. Stop pussyfooting around. Folks, again, people have too much time. That's the problem. Even if they say they don't have enough time, I'm watching you. You're lying. You're playing around on social media all the time. You're fucking catching up on every episode of whatever's on Netflix that's hot at the moment. You're chatting with your, hey, dude, has anybody got a great uh, docuseries on uh, Netflix I should watch? Yeah, motherfucker, get your ass to work. That's what you should be doing. You're not living forever. Your kids are watching. Your friends are watching. Even the ones that talk shit about you, they're all watching you. The question is, what are they watching you do? I want to be a leader to myself, first and foremost, to my kids, to my wife, to my in-laws, to my parents, to my sisters, to, to everyone. You can't talk about it. You got to be it. And I hope every single person listening to this show stops dealing with granular bullshit and start focusing on grand results, grand vision. It will serve you and the people you're trying to serve at a whole nother level. If your problem keeps happening, start looking at the problem, the underlying thing that's making that problem consist. It's always the biggest. I can tell you this. The number one thing, it's 100% guaranteed. You're a part of the problem. You're a part of the solution as well, though. If you know it's a problem, start thought auditing. It's real. It will change your life. If the big things aren't in your bank account, <laughs> big numbers and the big results aren't coming in your life and your business, it's because you're too granular. I struggled with this for years. I'm telling you, I'm trying to help you. I'm here to help you. This is something that most people's never talked to. I've never heard anybody talk about this, by the way. And one more thing, something very interesting. This is the first time I've traveled when I went to Utah without my family in a long, long time, like years. I usually travel with my wife and kids. 
But um, I didn't this time because my wife had a lot going on and whatever. So I love my kids. And I have a point here. Like I hug them. Every morning I wake up, I say, hey, love you. Good morning. Every night, sweet dreams, love you. It's my life. I really, really, really love my kids. Like, I, like it's, it's a big deal to me. My parents, they, they showed me how to love kids. They were great to me and my sisters. So I'm very fortunate in that. But one of the biggest speakers up there, he's big. He's worth a lot, a lot of money. He's done a lot of cool things, helped a lot of people change their lives. A big takeaway, he said, he said, someone asked him, what was the one thing you wish you would have done different? Keep in mind, his kids are growing now. They're a little bit older, 18 and above. He said, I wish I would have touched them more, hugged them, kissed them, told them I love them more. What's pretty cool about that is I don't have that problem. And I'm not judging this, by the way. I, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. This is for me. I'm just sharing my, what I learned, right? This is not a regret I'll ever have. Because I do know kids will only be kids once. I only have a very short window of opportunity to hug, kiss, talk to them, tell them how much daddy loves them, what daddy stands for. And that's why I write these books too. Because I can show them from the things I've done. Not what I talked about. Just By the way, I talk and do. Talk about it and do it. Talk about it more. Do it more. Talk about it more. Do it more. But I, I'm so thankful that I've learned that this is a real thing. So I pay attention to successful people. See, it's not about money. This guy has a lot more money than me, by the way, a lot more. But that doesn't mean he's more successful than I am. You know, yes, he might have more money, but he doesn't have what I have with my kids. And he might wish he could go back. You can't go back in time, but I can always make more money. He can too. He is. And again, I'm not mad at him. He's not mad. It is what it is. What it is, though, is high-level functioning entrepreneurs we, we, we know, by the way, I have flaws too. We all have flaws, but I'm just very proud that I don't have that flaw. See, again, this is called gratitude. He's very grateful he's touched and impacted more people's lives and done a lot of cool stuff, and he's still doing it, which I think is awesome. I'm learning from him on multiple levels. Where I'm going with this story is pick up from what people are saying they wish they had just as much as what they wish they didn't have or didn't do because time doesn't stop for anybody. Our kids are going to grow up. Our grandkids, I don't have grandkids yet, nor do I see that happening anytime soon. But these are things I think about. Keeps me up at night. Makes me want to make more money with my lifestyle to have more time to do those things that I want to do that are important to me. I think it's very important that you understand what's important to me if you follow me. Family is very, 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 very big. It is my thing, actually. So... I don't trade money for time against away from my family. I just don't do it. I want to be around bo- guys and people that I can, you know, we can change people's lives together, but I don't have to do that at the cost of my family time. There's ways to do this. And um, I just hope you guys stay around on the journey. I appreciate all you guys that share this on social media. If this podcast shows made any impact or any insights, helped you kind of stop thinking granular, start focusing on grand. I think it will really make a big impact. Um, I, I think I've heard Ed talk about this granular grand thing. Someone did at the event. I can't, I don't have the, exactly who said that, but I want to give credit where credit's due, but it really resonated with me because I've seen this happen so much with so many people. They're so angry that they're not getting the grand results, but yet they're so caught up in the granular steps, granular things that don't really make two shits until you're actually at the next level. So again, appreciate you sharing this. If you ever get a chance Please, if the show's ever made an impact, get over to iTunes or wherever you listen and get, leave a five-star review and give me a shout-out. Uh, tag me. Um, I will repost typically very quickly and uh, give you a quick shout-out and say thank you. But um, I'm here for you guys. I'm rooting for you. I'm very grand with this. Um, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. And I appreciate you guys being here. So with that said, keep me posted with your results. Follow me on Instagram at Mark Evans DM and Facebook as well. We got some really cool shit in the works. And what was even neat, as soon as I got back from the jet, we hopped on the yacht three days later with the fam and uh, hung out for the day. And it's really cool that this shit, first of all, I pinch myself daily, even that this is my life. It still doesn't even seem real, but it is. And I'm just very thankful I never quit. I never gave up. And I just keep thinking bigger. And uh, I know you're there too. So I appreciate you being here. 
thinking about your root recording. Hey. I'm more Kevin Steele. I'm here to help and teach them what I, what I know and how I did it. To discover freedom. There ain't no question. More Kevin's when he step in the doubt. He's closing deals. It's time to tell him what the DM stand for. I'm a deal maker. A deal maker. But I'm not just a deal maker. I'm a dream maker. The journey's where it's at. It's all about the process. It's time to get over to the DM project. From a small town in Ohio. So I know how it is. And I come from a lot of money. I remember as a kid. Wanted to make a honey brass. Didn't see no one making more than that. Graduated high school with a 1.8. Probably should've held me back. I hope my principals and teachers are alive just to witness this. I'm my own boss. I'm out here running to a figure businesses. I can walk away from it all. And I'll be good. But I've been called to help people just like y'all. Learn the game. It's time to ball. Everybody chasing the money, but I'm not chasing the money. I'm out here chasing the purpose. Yo, I've been working my whole life. What got us where we at isn't gonna get us where we wanna go. So it's time to push, time to learn, time to grow. Uh -oh. I'm more Kevin's DM. I'm here to help and teach him what I, what I know and how I did it. To discover freedom. There ain't no question more Kevin's when he step in the doubt. He's closing deals. It's time to tell him what the DM stand for. I'm a deal maker, a deal maker. But I'm not just a deal. I'm a dream maker The journey's where it's at It's all about the process It's time to get over to the DM project I'm more Kevin I'm Deal maker Deal maker This is the podcastfactory.com.